Hello, welcome to another episode of Making Moves with DJ Mystery. Today I have a special guest, someone I've had the opportunity to work with multiple times, and she is here to bless us with some inside information, maybe, Um, (laughs) maybe, you know, uh, share her journey on how she got to where she's at. Um, She is a casting director in Hollywood, uh, and she she owns her own company called House of Talent, Miss April Custodio. Did I say that right? Yeah, you got it right. Perfect. (laughs) Good job, good job. (laughs) Thank you so much. I appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, Please tell the people where you're from um, and just how you got into the industry. Um, Let's see. So I'm originally from Florida, but I grew up in the Bay Area. And um, while I was in the Bay Area, in my earlier years, I, let's see, um, I used to work for a dot com. So after 9-11 hit, you know, um, our business basically kind of went under. So I left the Bay Area and I moved down to LA because I was like, I just need a break, you know. Um, and when I came down to LA, I knew no one. And I remember I had went out one night and I met this girl and she was like, just you know, network, you know, try to, you know, go to some casting agencies, you know, that's the best way, you know, and it's a small world. So go out and just start networking, you know, with other people, you know, with the casting directors, you know, they'll continue, you know, to introduce you to new people. So I was like, okay, let me try that. And I did that. And once I got into the business and once I started meeting new people, I learned it, you know, I learned about SAG. I knew the contract, like the back of my hand. Yes. And then I started, you know, uh, when I saw roles that were going on, I would recommend people for them. And so then the casting directors just, you know, they loved me because I was helping them out, you know, and I was making their job so much easier, which I didn't realize how much easier I was making the job until now I'm in that position. And I'm just like, wow, that's like, it's amazing when people come to me and they're able to bring me other, you know, talent or, you know, or, you know, other options. So I'm just like, oh, thank you. It's just like one less thing, you know, that I have to do. But um, but it definitely helps, you know, it's definitely a collaborative thing. So when everyone can kind of put their hands into it and help each other, it definitely makes things run a lot smoother. So you were you were never talent? You were always working for the cast? Oh, no, 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 no. I used to be talent. Like when I first, I would do extra work. I would do principal work. I did audition. So I've done all that. I used to model in New York, you know, so you know, cause I'm six. Yeah, let's, talk, let's talk about that. And you know, you, you, you skipped right <laughs> over that part. What, let, let, let's come on. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta get to know. April. Um, see, this is the thing. So I used to model in New York, but I didn't like it. Right. I hated it. Number one, I eat too much for that. Right. Um, <laughs> uh-huh. I used to eat, don't judge me, but when I was like 11 years old, I would eat like Big Macs, like three or four Big Macs in one sitting. I was like, I was like 5'11", 115 pounds. I was anorexic, but these Big Macs, like they did nothing to me. So when I had gone to New York, you know, and when I used to live out there, they literally, because, you know, I used to live with my agents. So literally um, they would feed me carrots and water, right? And they thought that that was going to sustain me. And I remember looking outside of my window from our high rise and I would look down and there was like a McDonald's on the corner. And I just wanted a Big Mac so bad, right? (laughs) But they were so strict. All we could eat was our carrots and our water. And, you know, a lot of the other girls, you know, they smoked and they drank coffee and that and all that stuff. And I did none of that. I didn't drink coffee. I didn't smoke. So my appetite was constantly, you know, I didn't have anything to quench my appetite like the other girls did, you know? So, I mean, carrots and water, they didn't even need it. They just needed their coffee and their their cigarettes, right? (laughs) But yeah, so I wasn't, I wasn't happy. I wasn't, um, I wasn't cooperative, you know, I, um, and they told me if I didn't change my attitude, they were going to send me back to the Bay. So I kind of made that happen. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Which which is okay. I mean, I I feel like, uh, you, you moved into a role that's a, a lot more, I mean, you could, you could do it for longer, you know, like, I feel like models, like, they have to be so on point all the time. And like you said, their, their diets and, and doing all that stuff, like, which is cool for, for you. But after a certain amount of time, you're going to get 
tired of tired of that, even if you wanted yeah. to do it. You, you know? know, I always tell people that's why models are so grouchy, right? They haven't eaten, they haven't slept, right? you know, they're just on a caffeine high and nicotine high. That's all it is. And I mean, no offense to models out there because it's a difficult job. It's such a difficult job. I couldn't do it. Well, do a good job of what you're doing right now. Oh, so you. we'll, we'll see <laughs> <for> that. <laughs> all right. So you were on set doing um, pretty much what doing the casting stuff without even right. knowing it, you know, like, like even knowing the rules for SAG and, and like, I know there's people on set that I, when I'm on set, I go to and like, Hey, what does this mean? Like, what is, you know, because they just know it. they've been in it for so long and they know it and they do this for, for their mm -hmm. main thing. How did you even learn all the information? Is it just strictly research online? Was it reading? What was it? So I don't know if you remember, but back in the day, they used to have like this little yellow booklet, the little SAG, uh -huh. you know, contract was in there. So I would read it. I knew it like the back of my hand. And so, and then whenever situations happened on set, I would just pay attention and see, you know, how the producers dealt with it, how the actors dealt with it, how SAG dealt with it. And every single person dealt with it a different way, you know? So, and then that's another reason why, you know, in my casting, I like to go to set a lot and, you know, I would wrangle, you know, I would help wrangle because I would like to be the liaison between all three of them so that everyone could come to a middle ground and everyone walked away happy, you know, because I knew it from all different standpoints. And so um, that just made everything a lot easier to deal with. And it made people gravitate toward me a little um, faster because like I said, it made their jobs easier. If you can make someone's job easier in this business, like I said, if you're, cause we're already working 24 seven, right? I'm sure like when you're editing, it's like you're focused and two days will pass by and you don't even realize it, right? That's like the same yeah. thing. So, you know, when we're constantly working, you know, the sunrise comes, the sunset comes, we don't even realize it. And, but if somebody makes, you know, if somebody gives us those extra few minutes a day for us to grab a bite to eat, you know, cause it's like, I haven't had a hot meal in a long time. By the time I get it, you know, by the time I'm actually able to eat it, like so much time has passed by, I'm eating a cold meal. So, you know, it gets, it gets super stressful and strenuous. I mean, I love it, but you know, there are some points, you know, that take it away. So if somebody can make our job a little bit easier, it, it's a huge difference and it makes a world of difference in our, you know, in our lives. So when I didn't realize I was doing that for other people. So that's Got how it. people like started like gravitating toward me. Cause they're just like, Oh, I feel a little bit, you know, I feel a little bit easier, you know, when she's around. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you made their jobs easier. Who, who wouldn't want that? Right. But it was something <laughs> that I enjoyed. I didn't feel like I was doing extra work or I didn't feel like, you know, I was, you know, hurting myself in a way. So it's just something that I enjoyed. So I just kind of like fell into that role. So it was, it was a super easy transition. So you say you fell into the role, but how did, who gave you that? Like, you know, cause you were, like you said, you were doing this as talent, but then you obviously made a transition in some way, shape or form to actually doing the actual casting work and being hired as the casting. So did you start by, you know, starting your own company so, already? No. So what happened was actually I was on set one time and I, and it was like a slow year or something. And slow year means that like, because I was one of the, like, I worked a lot, right? I was young. This is when I was young and cute, right? <laughs> so I was like, I worked a lot. This was 20 wow. years ago. Just think about this. This was 20 years ago, right? So Wait, 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 to my audience. She says it's 20 years <laughs> ago, but look, she still looks young and cute. So stop it. Relax. Okay. So anyways, so <laughs> hey, you have good genes. It's okay. You're blessed. So 20 years ago, um, you know, I was working every single day and I, I was getting a little bit burnt out and, you know, I love to cook and my family owns a restaurant in the Bay area. So I was actually making plans to go work with them to learn the restaurant industry and then to bring it down to LA and to open up restaurants in LA. As I was making those calls and making those plans, you know, to, uh, to move back to the Bay, you know, just for a few months and to learn it, I got a call and, you know, from a casting agency and they said, Hey, you know, um, we're, you know, we're like letting someone go. Do you want to come in and do you want to fill this position? And I was like, I don't know, like, is this something I really want to do? Like, I already have plans. I'm moving out, you know, like what, you know, like this is kind of, this is kind of weird. And they're just like, you know what, just try it. 
you know, just try it for like a month, see how you like it. And then I started, I was like, okay, you know, why not? Why not try it? So I jumped into it and it, it was just crazy from there. Wow. But so how did they know to call you though? It's just because I, you've worked with them for so yeah, long. Yeah, I had worked with them for so long. And this company, actually, I think I had worked on one of their very first jobs when they were first opening. So when, um, mm. so when I was working with them, you know, it was just, it was just like an easy connection and an easy relationship. So once I jumped in with them, um, you know, I kind of changed a few things because I don't know if you remember back in the day where we used to have to get details, we would have to call on the line and listen to it. And it's like, yeah. if someone called, yeah. you had to hang up and call back and listen to it all over again. Right. So it's yeah. like, I hated doing that. Right. Cause my phone was always blowing up. So I created an email and I was the one that started creating, like I started sending out emails and every casting company came on to me and SAG, they all came on to me and said that I could not do that. And I was like, show me where I can't do that. Like, why can't I do that? It's so easy. You know, people read it at their leisure. They get all the information right there. They don't have to listen to the line five different times. Right. And they could refer back to it. And they can refer back to it. The map is there. Like all that information is there. Why not do an email? And so they like little by little people started like getting off my back. And then all of a sudden I realized everyone started doing it and they started using my same exact format. And I was like, Hey, whatever. It makes people's lives easier. You know, it's fine. You know, there's a lot of people out here that's like, you know, competition and it's, uh, you know, conflict of interest, but I'm just like, Hey, if we can help each other, like, let's move forward, you know, let's figure it out together. And let's just keep making this industry go boom, you know, let's keep the jobs here in LA. I mean, I cast nationwide, but the more proficient we are here, you know, it's like, let's, let's make it happen. Well, let's, let's stop right there. Just like that attitude alone, like how, where does that attitude come from? Cause not everybody has that attitude, especially in this industry, everybody's trying to take advantage of somebody. So, so where does that come from? I am the oldest sibling of like 10. <laughs> okay. Wow. So, um, in my house, I, um, you know, my mom worked a lot. My dad, um, he traveled a lot. Uh, at first it was just my sister and I, you know, she was, but I treated her like she was like my daughter, you know, I made sure that she was fed and she went to school on time and she got home, you know, I had to make sure she, you know, I picked her up from school, you know, whatever it was she needed, you know, I was, I, I filled that role. Yeah. And then when my other siblings came into play, I took over that role as well. And my job was to keep harmony. My job was to make sure everybody did what they were supposed to do and do it well. <laughs> Because, you know, if you don't do it right the first time, that means we have to do it again. There's not enough minutes in the day to keep doing the same job over and over and over. So that's in, that's in everything, everything, uh, every part of your life. Right. You know, so I just realized that, you know, if we all work together and if we're all on the same page, just everything just gets done so much easier and it makes life so much easier to handle. You know, it's like life already throws so much at us why cause unnecessary stress and unnecessary, unnecessary obstacles when you can either get it done right the first time and or figure it out ahead of time so that when the when the obstacle arises you already know how to to handle it you know or to prevent the obstacle altogether yeah so you so you were basically a, a parent from a young age <laughs> oh yeah definitely i was definitely a parent at a young age yeah got it <laughs> you've been training to uh wrangle and uh, con not control, but just get, control. Well, yeah, control. <laughs> get in order a, a large group of people, which is pretty much a casting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. And it's funny because they call it like wrangling cats, right? You're just like, here, kitty, kitty. Wait, wait, hold on. Where are you going? Got to come back. What about this one? You know? So yeah, it's, yeah, it's definitely wrangling cats because everyone has a different mentality. So especially, you know, in this industry, you deal with so many different um, personalities. Uh -huh. And all of my siblings have different personalities. <laughs> so that was, you know, that was, uh, you know, a test and definitely training for this industry for sure. Got it. So, all right. So now you, uh, you decided to take the job. You ended up, you ended up enjoying it, obviously, cause you're still doing it. <laughs> yeah. What were some of the obstacles you ran into? Um, if any, uh, and then what were some of the things that, what are some of the things that uh, make you love your job? 
being, uh, being the new kid on the block, being the new kid on the block is always an obstacle. People don't take you seriously. They don't think you know what you're talking about. Um, the company I was working for was male dominated, you know, and this industry is, you know, male dominated in a lot of the ways. So that's difficult to deal with sometimes. And it's not that, um, it's not that I am intimidated by men um, because I have eight brothers, right? <laughs> so it's not that I'm intimidated by men. It's that they just don't take me seriously. And I have to be a little bit more assertive or I have to like figure out, you know, how to, um, how to communicate with them, you know, cause every man communicates differently. Right. Every, so human I just have to, huh? every human communicates differently. Well, yeah, every human communicates differently too. But a lot of people think that men just walk around, you know, with, you know, just like, uh, testosterone right yeah but that's not what it is it's like there's a lot of guys out there who are just big teddy bears you know and true, there's, a, there's a lot of guys out there who you know there's men out there who grew up with all brothers and then there's men out who grew up with all sisters they're gonna have completely different personalities so when I can figure out how to bond with them you know I um and it's not even like bonding as in you know, I'm going to come in and connive my way in there so that I can get, so I can get the job. It's nothing like that. It's like, Hey, you know, this is someone that also works in my industry. We can collaborate or not, but regardless, we're going to run into each other sometime somewhere. So we might as well form a relationship, you know, and learn how to be cordial and respectful to each other, you know, because a lot of the times, you know, you get disregarded, you know, by the men, you know, if you're a woman, because, they're so used to dealing with men and they think that women can't handle a lot of the things that go on in this industry. Cause you know, it can be pretty cutthroat sometimes. Sometimes. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> so it, I, to be honest, I, I had no idea. I always thought casting, I always viewed the casting part as more women in the, in, I don't know if it's because of when I got, I started getting into this and maybe it's, it transitioned at that point, but I, I didn't really know, realize that it was kind of dominated by, by male, to be honest. It's a lot of men. Um, and then you're hired by men. Still? Um, not, I mean, it's still probably 50, 50, okay. but it's still ran by men. Like our producers and our directors are mostly men. Got it. Got it. Um, so that's who we have to deal with. And that's who, you know, we communicate with throughout our days. And what are the things that you love about your job one of the things i love about my job what keeps is you going what 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 makes you feel good like like because there's certain things that you know for me let's just be honest i'm a mm -hmm. dj have dj for since i since 2003 uh full time since 2000 like 11 12 and you know, there's certain things about DJing that I'm just like, it gets on my dang nerves. But then there's 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 those moments in time where, you know, you put on, you're, you're in the what I call the zone and you have what's what I like to call oh moments. When the crowd goes, oh, that's my, <laughs> you know, like when they're like, oh, that's my joint. Um, so there's moments when I'm doing my job and it just feels, it feels right. It feels good. And everything's, everything is great, you know? And then, but that moment could easily, I can be taken out of that moment uh, by uh, someone in the crowd, you know, uh, giving me negative feedback, um, anything, it could be anything, but mm -hmm. there are moments in time where you just feel good about what you're doing and you feel like you're, you're making a difference. So, I throw that question to you. What um, are those moments for you as a casting director? Because I don't know what casting, what, what in that line of work makes you feel like, yes, this is. Okay, so I'm gonna take it back a little bit. Um, another obstacle that we have is, you know, there's a lot of people disappointment, right? You know, we're giving special opportunities, you know, in this business to be put in front of some pretty spectacular people, right? I agree. And so when you give people these opportunities, especially people that are begging for the opportunity or people who have given up their whole life from the Midwest or whatever, and they've moved out here and they're just, they beg for that chance and you give it to them and they blow it for 
whatever reason for, you know, they may cancel, they may show up late, even if they show up late, you know, um, maybe they're just not as prepared as they say that they are, you know, or whatever it is, you know, or they get on set and then they're entitled, you know, and they have a bad attitude, you know, and they, they're a little high maintenance on set and stuff like that. And like, you know, those, those are things, you know, that can ruin not only their image, but it can ruin my reputation as well, because I vetted them and I vouched for them to get to set, right? On the other hand, there are people that are so grateful. There are people that will like, for instance, um, I had a job recently with uh, Spike Lee and Magic Johnson. And, you know, this was just like a couple of days ago, actually. Okay, and what'd you say? Humble brag. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the guys that, you know, um, it, we needed basketball players. Mm -hmm. So one of the guys um, that I had hired is like 6'10", right? And uh, he just, Magic Johnson has been his idol since he was a kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I was able to get him on the set. You know, I was able to get him, you know, like it was picture picked. It was super easy. You yeah. know, I'm like, here's this guy. It's, you know, it was like a 70s scene. So he kind of, he, he was perfect for it because he had an Afro, you know, he was 6'10", you know, he's, the, I mean, it's just, it was just, it was just too perfect. Like it couldn't have been any more perfect. He was so grateful just by him saying, April, this has been a dream of mine to meet Magic Johnson and be on the set with Spike Lee as well. Like, are you kidding me right now? Like just those little things, like those little things right there just make me so happy. You know what I mean? Because it's like, yeah. just to see how happy he was and how grateful he was, like those things right there keep me going. So those are the moments. And honestly, those that is shoot. That like to be able to not only meet your idol, you know, but then meet someone else that's iconic and legendary, but then actually get paid for it too. <laughs> at the same time. And actually get paid for it. Yeah. Right, exactly. So it's like, it's a win, win, win. It's like, there's no, you know, there's nothing negative about it. But like I said, people blow those opportunities all the time. Yeah, I bet. You know, so it's like, but then there's people that are so grateful and it's like, okay, all these long hours that we put into this, you know, when you come across people like this, it just, it just makes it, you know, so much better and, um, and worth it. So, you know, you've obviously been in this industry for a while now. Um, and I know this may be really, really hard for you, but I just want to know a couple of your mm -hmm. most favorite projects that you've worked on and why they were your favorite. Um, I love working with Peter Berg. <laughs> Dude, I love working with Peter Berg. I know he's so passionate and, you know, he, um, he's so passionate and he just, you know, he, he, He's so particular, which, you know, every director is, of course, but he's very loud about it. You know what I mean? He's like, this is what I want to do. And I just love that energy, you know? Yeah. And, um, and he likes to question. He loves to ask questions and it'll be dumb things like, you know, what, what kind of mic is that? And where, why would you wear that hat? And what, where did you get that shirt from? I mean, just weird questions, you know what I mean? Just to get like some things out of you. His audition process is ridiculous. If you have talent, beyond what you're showcasing he can feel that and he will grab you to the deep depths of your soul and make you work your soul for that talent you know what i mean yeah it's, it's crazy how he can bring that out of people well, so I feel um, like that's the great the, the 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 great directors and people in this industry photographers you know cameramen videographers like when they don't have a director. They're just shooting themselves. They're able to pull things out of people just by, you know, maybe even having a small conversation, like you said, like asking, what does that hat mean to you? And then if it does mean something to you, they're going to show that passion for that hat. And then he's going to be like, see that passion? That's what I need right there. You know, so you are exactly. hit the nail on the head. And, and I second you on that, Peter Berg. Um, I had the opportunity to work with him on NFL spot and I had a, I had a great time. So yes, Continue. Yeah. Right, continue. His, his sets are always amazing. Um, another, another one, and this is like kind of ironic that, you know, his anniversary was yesterday of his death was Kobe. Yeah. I loved working on the sets with Kobe just to watch him work and just to watch him interact, you know, with other people. And 
He's so consistent, right? It didn't matter what set we were on. It didn't matter who he was speaking to, you know, whether it was the executive producer or the director, or, you know, um, it could be the janitor or wardrobe. It didn't matter who it was. You know, it could be, you know, the guy at the crosswalk, making sure that everybody's, you know, crossing the street, you know, he treated everyone the same. He had a smile for everyone. And, you know, he had this confidence about him that was, I'm the best, right? Like he knew he was the best, but he knew that he earned it because he works his butt off. But what I love about him is that he expects everyone else to be the best as well. You know, so he challenges people, you know, kind of like in a way that Peter Berg does, you know, yeah. but Peter Berg will kind of like drill you where Kobe will like school you, you know, and he'll like explain things to you and he'll drop knowledge, you know, and he'll make jokes and then he'll talk in another language, you know, and he just does these things, you know, he's just so charismatic. And like I said, it just didn't matter where he was, what set he was on. Um, you know, of course at the games, you know, he's a different person because he's a Mamba mode. Right. Yeah. But um, but yeah, but like on sets or like, you know, just in regular LA life, he was just always so, um, yeah, just like charismatic and his personally, his personality just, it, it was just contagious. Yeah. It was, so he's like also one of my favorites. Rest in peace. Yeah, that was, that was, that was a hard one. <laughs> All right. So we got how you got into the industry. Now let's talk about, you know, when you decided, when you decided to start, um, house of talent and uh and why and how and what obstacles you ran into now doing that um so i was with that company and um we started having different views on things <laughs> you know i guess we just started to outgrow each other a little bit which is fine you know it happens to a lot of companies and um and i had decided to leave so when i left I really didn't know what my next step was, you know? Um, I still loved being in the industry, but I didn't know how I wanted to proceed with, you know, um, either my career or if I wanted to pivot or, you know, what I wanted to do. Yeah. And so when I left, I was still getting phone calls from like producers and directors and, you know, they're just like, wait, what's going on? No, we still need you to cast for us. And I was like, I can't, I'm no longer with that company. And they're just like, well, you still need to cast for us. And I was like, I don't, I don't have a company. <laughs> I can't cast for you. You know, it's like, I'm not licensed. Like I don't have, I don't have anything right now. I can't cast for you. So um, I just kind of like, I would let it go, but then they would constantly check in with me. And then um, I had met, um, I had met up with one of my friends who's also in the industry, but he's uh, a gang boss. Right. And he wanted to start his own. He wanted to start create passive income, whatever he wanted to, he actually already started like his own agency, but he was like, will you come on and just help me like start it? And that day I had someone contact me and say, April, I have this job. Can you please cast it? So then I was, I asked my friend, I was like, well, do you mind if I cast this job through your company? And he was like, no, of course, like, come on in, like do it. Yeah. So then, um, I started casting and then just, word just spread like fire. I've never marketed. I've never advertised. I've never done anything. So all my jobs have always been, you know, word of mouth. So it just like spread like wildfire. And then I just created my own and just started working. Well, that's a testament to your abilities. That's a testament to your character and just your reputation, you know, to be able to, you know, jump in with a company that wasn't even established, but it was you, you were the... <laughs> the asset that everybody wanted um, and to be able to do that and still be successful and have, you know, the entire industry like, Hey, <laughs> you're back on, let's do this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's big props to you. Congratulations on that. Thank uh, you. Now, did you guys like use, or did, did you like break off of his company like is it so are you partner oh he was like this is too much i can't handle this he okay. was like this is all you uh, okay okay <laughs> so, yeah so that's how i actually created house of talent because his was called something else but i created like a house of i created house of talent off of that mm -hmm. from that because you know of what had happened so yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. He was like, this is what, this is way more than I expected this to be. And I was like, I know it looks all fun and games, you know, but it's smoke and mirrors. It's crazy. Yeah. Right. Uh, people, you know, they see the, the posts 
or whatever. They see, you know, that you're working on set with these amazing people, but they don't realize it, how much sleep you didn't get. <laughs> they don't realize how much stress it was to, you know, get everybody there and on time and with the right uh, wardrobe and, Everything. you know, to the right section and then make sure they're listening and doing the right things while they're on set. So, yeah, you are uh, a special individual. <laughs> yeah, and then let's add COVID to that as well, making sure everyone gets COVID tested ahead of time, you know, yeah. like that definitely put, you know, a big monkey wrench in the in the system, especially, I mean, I like it because now that when we do auditions, you know, we can do auditions via Zoom, you know, and I can do them nationwide, which I was already kind of doing, but now it's the norm and it's not so, you know, uh, before people were like, you're gonna do a Zoom audition? Like, it's kind of weird, but now they love it, you know, because now they don't have to come in for the callbacks, you know, we don't have to order food, you know, and sit in callbacks in the studio all day. Everybody can just do it from the, you know, the comfort of their couch. They can turn off their camera and they can just watch and listen and, you know, and just chime in, you know, that when might, that might benefit me a little bit more than that. Um, in uh, yeah, San Diego, for sure. <laughs> well, no, was, for sure. That was part of the reason why I kind of I stepped away, but I was just like, you know what, I got I, I can't be driving to LA every day for an audition mm -hmm. that I might get, you know, so that was that was rough for me. Uh, but I was willing after. I would say probably after a year of not being, not doing that, I was kind of like, well, you know, I think it is kind of worth it. You know, if you can book, you know, get books, it is worth it. And uh, so I was willing to do it, but then COVID hit and everything happened. So I was like, well, I guess they're not shooting, so I don't have to do it yet. But now you're telling me that there's yes. a chance. <laughs> that I could yeah, for sure. I, I mean, we have people auditioning from all over the country you know, trying to audition for LA roles where well, we have to actually go in and weed them out because they think that, you know, hey, I'm in New York and I can audition for this. But the thing is, is that if we need them to get a COVID test tomorrow, they can't get here. You know, if we need them to come in and quarantine for 10 days, they can't do it. You know, so um, we're very strict about the local hires. You know, like I have a job going on in Miami right now and there's a lot of New Yorkers always want to submit for like the Miami jobs, you know, and they always want to audition for them and stuff like that. And I'm just like, look, no, because if I need you here tomorrow, you can't do it. If they need a last minute fitting or if they need whatever it is, you know, you can't make it happen. However, one thing that's great about the pandemic um, is you have access to online classes, right? So all of the classes that are like, if you're in Southern California and there's some amazing classes in New York, you have access to those classes because they're all on Zoom now you know, where before you would have to go in and audit them, right? And you would have to go in and sit for four hours in a classroom, right? It's not like that anymore. You know, you can audition or you can um, you can audit these classes wherever and you can take these classes no matter where the, the coach is or, you know, where the, the teacher is, you can take these classes. And it's pretty amazing. Just to make it clear, you're referring to acting classes, correct? Acting classes, yes. Yes, okay. Oh, so I just want to make it clear for people that are listening. Oh, sorry, I thought I said that, sorry. Oh, you can take you can take acting classes online, and it can benefit you very well. I know uh, the classes that I've taken. Um, in you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like acting like acting classes they don't really teach you how to act. They teach you how to access your different emotions inside, and and you get to learn more about yourself than anything. And so they teach you how to harness those things and use them uh, on screen. So am and I when correct? Peter Burr goes in and pulls your soul out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> this is what we've been working for. No, um, yes, yeah, so that's very true. Um, of course, it depends on what kind of acting classes it's, you know, you go to. You know, if you go to, you can go to a technique class, you know, um, where it's not really going to do that. But yes, a lot of people who go through acting classes, they need a therapist on the side because <laughs> you're dealing with i'm not kidding like you're dealing with some serious emotions and that's where you know a lot of the art comes from because it comes from that raw you know emotion you know that you either never dealt with or that you learn to deal with you know and you've learned to transform it into an art and into like a showcase so that other people can relate to it as well right yeah so what is your what are your what's your advice for uh, let's just say a uh, 
person that wants to get into acting, um, you know, because they can't just call you and say, hey, I want to get on set. You know, they got to go through a process, uh, but you might be able to help help them uh, maneuver it a little bit better. You know, so what are some tips that you might give somebody that that wants to, you know, work with you? Um, it's funny, I get asked this question every day on Clubhouse. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I would say, you know, if someone is first starting out in the business, number one, um, figure out what you want to do. Do you want to do TV? Do you want to do film? Do you want to do commercials? Do your research, look into that first, um, look up YouTube videos, um, audit classes, you have to hone your skill, you know, um, you need to audit these classes and figure out because, you know, a lot of people, you know, aren't Meisner actors, you know, and so a lot of people can't do improv, you know, so find what your niche is and concentrate on that. Get a, you know, get representation like an actor or, a I mean, a, an agent or a manager and have them represent you for whatever that is. I mean, of course there's people that are triple threats, you know, people that can do everything across the board, you know, yeah. so where the agent will sign them, you know, across the board. Well, you know, some people only have like a certain niche, get in there, you know, master this, get out there and book, you know, with your agent or your manager. Um, and then, uh, and then just go from there and then start venturing out, you know, when you start seeing, you know, other, other avenues, I guess, you know, like for instance, if you're on set and you're just like, oh, okay, you know, I'm, 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 in, you know, I'm all improv, I'm all comedy, you know, this works well for me. But then you go and you see someone who's super dramatic, you know, and you realize, hey, you know what, I actually have that that I need to work on as well. I know I can pull that out of me. Yeah. Explore that, right? Um, so that's, that's pretty much my advice, you know, but it would definitely be to hone your craft and to be able to control it and to be able to turn it off and on when it's needed. And you see so many talented people on a daily basis. So how does one stand out? Personality. Personality. Reliability. Reliability is everything. How fast they answer their phone. Um, I always say, <laughs> if you don't answer your phone, you could be missing that million dollar phone call. Like you have to answer your phone, right? Um, a lot of times we use, we use text message these days, you know, because it's easier for us to text a hundred people in an hour. Otherwise, if we're talking to somebody that could take a full hour right on the phone. So, you know, we try to utilize text just to try to get as much information out as possible, just to make the most of our time. Yes. Respond back. If it takes you four hours to respond back, the opportunity might've been gone already, you know, because if we're trying to put people on a veil and they haven't responded back, they probably went, you know, and they're trying to book immediately. I mean, don't get me wrong. Some people will be on a bell for a few days or maybe a week, you know, depending on how fast, you know, they plan on shooting or what the schedule is. But if they're trying to book immediately and you haven't responded back, uh -huh. they probably moved on to the next person. So don't ever take that. Don't ever take that chance. Always have your phone on, always be in communication. Okay. And then for parents, parents, you know, do you have any advice for parents? Because, you know, parents, they want to get involved with everything, especially because they love their child so much and they want them to, to be successful. But <clears throat> I'm sure there's certain things that casting director, directors and directors and, you know, people on set, they're just like, don't do this. <laughs> so parents who don't monitor their kids and who pump them with sugar before coming to set yeah, or for anything else, those are big problems because that means that we're going to have attention problems, right? And that's what we need. It's already difficult to keep attention, you know, keep the attention of a child. Um, but don't get me wrong. These children these days, they are so talented. They have their lines down better than any adult that ever walks in the room. And I mean, um, so and it's crazy because a lot of these kids can't even read, right? Like sometimes we get kids so young, they can't even read. The parents are just telling them the lines and yeah. the kids memorize them. So when they come in and if we have a script change, the kids don't know it because the parents read it off to them, right? They're just like, oh, I can't read. And you're like, wait, how do you know all like four pages? How do you know four pages of dialogue? You know, and they're just like, oh, my mom read it to me on the way here from school, you know? <laughs> it's so crazy, but um, make sure that your child is personable, that they're not scared of adults all, I mean, obviously 
they have to learn that line. You know, you don't ever want to put them in a compromising position or a situation. So, um, but also make sure that this is something that your child wants to do. You know, if there's resistance, don't force them because then they'll, you know, they'll, they'll rebel, kids rebel, right? <laughs> um, so I would say, you know, test it out, you know, give them a couple scripts, just like pull it offline, you know, and test it out with them, see how they like it, you know, play games with them, you know, go different roles, show me your happy face, show me your sad face, show me your excited face, show me, you know, your mad face, you know, you're disappointed, you know, go through those, see if they can nail those and then find an agent for them. Okay. And um, your goals, what are your goals for your company moving forward? Well, pre-COVID, um, I was trying to open up offices on the East Coast just because it was difficult because I, I would fly personally and I would go, you know, I would fly to all the different states, you know, no matter where we were filming. And it was just difficult for me to be in um, <laughs> several different places at once, obviously. So yeah. I have a team, you know, and they started going for me, but I just feel like it's easier if I just have different offices in, in, um, in other states you know, so that way I just have like boots on the ground kind of thing. However, <laughs> um, I'm very hands-on and if there's a big project, then I like to be there. Yeah. So I would probably show up anyways, depending on like how big the project is. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, uh, you seem like you have, I mean, you treat it like anybody would treat their own product, you know, like yeah. you want, you want the best foot forward at all times. And you seem, you know, you said you're hands on. So, and you do a very good job at what you do. So, um, mm -hmm. except for when you, you told me, I looked like I had a dad bod on, on uh, the Humira commercial. I, I said that? I, I don't know about that. I don't, I look, Hey, wait, I said that I, I, I might be a, you know, a, a strong man, but Wait, hold on. Hurt my feelings. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I no, you didn't. No, you did. You, you were like, hold on. That that you don't look like the pictures from uh, last year. <laughs> I was like, hold on. I'm gonna get did back I there. But that's because we have a. That's because we have a relationship, though. That, you wouldn't say that Wait. to a random person. But but did I really tell you that though? I don't. I don't know if you, you used the word dad bob, but you're like, uh, I was wearing a um. The shirt they gave me though, <clears throat> it was it was the shirt, you know, because you know I got, <laughs> I got some abs, all right. So you, it was the shirt, the way it was it was hitting me, it it kind of made me have like a little little you know a little belly, you know. Um, but, I mean, listen, I'm not against bellies. I'm not in the best shape. Okay, <laughs> I get it. But one of my biggest pet peeves, and everybody else across this industry, so hopefully everybody understands this, is if you don't look like your picture we're going to lose our minds. Right. Yeah. And especially right now during COVID, no headshots are believable. Everybody's full of it. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the reasons why we have auditions to begin with because people don't look like their headshots. And when you walk in, you know, we're casting you because we expect you to look like your headshot. So when you walk in and you don't look like your headshot, it's like, okay, now he already doesn't look like his headshot, but can he act, you know, can he nail this role? So, you know, there's like all these things working against you. So that's the whole point of like the audition. However, Yes, I think on Humera, you were a baseball player, right? No, a security uh -huh. guard. It was when we were in uh, we were in Malibu, and it was like a a band, and they were doing a concert. Okay, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Did you have a beer belly or something? Because oh, I don't drink. Number one, <laughs> number two, I might have a slight dad did bod you, at the moment. Did you have okay. a burger belly? <laughs> I don't know. No, honestly, I think it was the shirt the way it was. It was I was wearing it. I don't know because they had. I'm sorry, I didn't. I don't. I didn't mean to offend you. Which is crazy because I don't remember ever you being out of shape. So that's crazy. <laughs> I probably was just messing with you. I don't know, but um, but I have to tell you that one of my um, <laughs> one of my biggest downfalls, but also one of my biggest uh, <laughs> uh. One of the positive things about me is that I'm very honest. And if I feel like something you're doing is hurting you, I'm going to let you know, you know, as you should, and, um, as you should. Yeah. And a lot of people can be sensitive to that, but I try to be as nice as possible, but sometimes it's just like, look, I don't have enough time, you know, to sit here and nurture your feelings, but look, you know, you have this beard and, um, it's like, you have bald spots in your beard. It's better <laughs> that you just like shave your beard. You know, <laughs> like go, with the light, go with the real light, 
light one. <laughs> right, exactly. Or, you know, people, you know, if I'm looking for someone between 25 and 35 years old and there's someone who's submitting and they're 60 years old, you know, and they think that they can fit into that somehow because someone told them that they still look young. It's like, I have to let them know, look, you need to stop submitting for this. You need to tell your agent, stop submitting for this. You're never going to fit into this role. You're wasting my time. I have to weed through 3000 people per role. That's crazy. Don't be that extra person. You know well, what I mean? Let's talk about that real quick. Cause, okay. because people are told that like for me, for instance, um, a lot of the roles that are actually my age, I'm 37 and a lot of the roles that are my age are like you have to like they usually have a beard like or at least a shadow or something like that um like the dad roles or uh even like detective most detectives aren't really detectives until they're like my age but i can't even grow facial hair <laughs> number one number two like so what what would i let's let's use me since i'm here and i and i already go through it mm -hmm. What would I fit into? Like what age range would you, would you put me? I would put you at the 25 to 35 year old age range. Um, okay. Cause you definitely look younger than 37 years old, right? You still have like the baby face. So that's great. Um, and, 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 and it also depends, you know, a lot of people are just trying to relate, you know, especially like for commercials, you know, people want to relate to you. So yeah. if, if there's people in the Midwest and they want to believe that you're, you know, you're not going to, you don't, you don't look like a 37 year old person in the Midwest. Yeah. Right. I don't yeah. know. I don't know if it's our California sun or whatever it is, but you look like a 34, a 37 year old person in the Midwest. So if you come on and, you know, and it's like, Hey, this guy's playing a dad, you know, with a teenager, right. Because that's usually 37 year olds have teenagers at this point. Yeah. They're not going to believe you and they're going to be turned off because you don't relate to them. So, um, so yes, so because of LA, you know, and because a lot of people look younger than their age out here, um, you know, we're able to like manipulate the ages. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, so just stay in the 25 to 35 year old range, you know, and I mean, if people want to bring you out for something older, that's fine. You know, if it's clean shaven, like as a businessman or something like that, I can see that. Yeah. Um, as a cop, I could see that too, you know, like in the thirties, you know, because like I said, we can manipulate it if we need to. Yeah, yeah, all right. You said that, and I was like, hold on, because if I submit my age range, they're definitely not going to cast me because they, they, I look like a kid. Yeah. <laughs> compared, to, compared to the, like, I've gone into rooms, and I'm like, there's no way they're going to book me. This this person, these guys look the part. Like, I don't look the part. That's, that was a lot of what my agency was sending me on. Stuff that was my age, stuff that really I was. But and it's probably because the people that were coming in were probably not, they were probably way older than you, but they fit into that age according to the Midwest yeah. or to like the general market, right? But even I sitting in the waiting room, I'm looking at them like, yeah, they fit, <laughs> they fit the role more than I do. There's right. no way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, you never know who they want until they see it. True, true. But see, but then, but then that contradicts my point when you said you have a 60 year old that might look younger that submits i know you don't want it but yeah. you know sometimes it's just like hell mary they might want me <laughs> i don't well, know it depends right because like for instance if it's like a couple so if the girl is coming in and she's 25 to 35 right yeah and then we have a husband that's coming in that's also 25 to 35 but then a 60 year old man comes in obviously that's not going to work no, no you know no. what i mean so of course, you know, you have to go with the specs and see how the commercial is like working out and yeah, yeah, yeah. see, see right. what fits with the roles, but yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, and last, I asked everybody this, um, your 18 year old self, if you could place one call to your 18 year old self, uh, what would you tell yourself? Um, I would tell myself to take opportunities and be prepared. Just prepare yourself better, you know, pay more attention. Um, is there a story behind that? Is there an opportunity that- um, You know, there's, um, I think a lot of my life, I had the whole imposter syndrome. Are you familiar with that? Yes. Yeah. I think so, I, I honestly think I had that in, in the NFL, even though I, you know, made it to that level and I, you know, did what I did there. But there was times where like, I would, 
be like, I don't know if I'm good enough to go, or I don't know if I'm big enough, or I don't know if I'm fast enough. So yes, I understand. Right. You know, you're around all these greats and you feel like you don't deserve to be there or, you know, that they're going to think that you don't deserve to be there. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, I was thrown, I was always around greats for some reason, you know, and I never felt adequate. I always felt like I didn't deserve to be there. So I would always remove myself from the situation. And it's crazy because I would meet people. I mean, I would run into people later on in life and they're like, what happened to you? You were amazing. Like you were the only one that was able to knock this out the park and you disappeared, you know? Wow. And I was like, so I, I slowly learned that. And then of course, you know, I learned it the hard way, but at least I learned it. Yeah. It's still something that I'm kind of overcoming a little bit. You know, I have to remind myself, you worked hard, you work hard, you know, and it's okay. Like you deserve to be here just like everybody else deserves to be here. You know, I, I, I dropped out of college. <laughs> so since I dropped out of college, you know, I felt like I always had to triple work to prove myself, yeah. you know, and I felt like people would be able to see through me and say, you know, you didn't get your degree. How are you here like you don't deserve to be here like we're all usc you know stanford you know we're all you know we have double phds you know when you're sitting around those type of people um you know you start to question yourself like why how did i get here oh my god they're not going to think of me as the same or the same caliber but sometimes hard work you know or actually most of the time hard work beats talent and you know we've been told this all of our lives but when you see it actually happen, you know, in front of you and you see like how far you've came, you know, from like where, where you began, yeah. it's just, yeah. I mean, like, just like you said, you know, when you were playing football, it's like you questioned yourself, right? Yeah. You're just like, you're over here, you know, breaking sound barriers yet you're questioning yourself, right? <laughs> yeah. For so, sure. Yeah. And there's a lot of people out there that even peers that were with me that, I didn't even realize that they looked up to me, you know, like to me, I'm just trying to make it. I'm just trying to get to from point A to point B uh, to point C. And, you know, these guys next to me, I'm looking at them like, man, they are so much better than me. But then find out years later, they looked up to me. They were like, I loved how you worked. I love how, you know, like you were always first in, in certain things. You always, you know, like you were always the example. And I'm like, what? And some of these guys went beyond, like they won Super Bowls. They did way beyond. They got drafted. I didn't even get drafted. I was a free agent. So I really work hard. Uh, but to hear them say that about me years later, I was like, man, I, I was, I was mentally, I was messing myself up, you know? Right. So, so to everybody I mean, out I there. Imagine, yeah. Imagine if you knew that back then you could be in a completely different place right now. Right. It's like you were holding yourself back. That's how I felt also. That yeah. was my big, that's what I would tell myself at 18. And do you think you would listen? I don't know. Yeah, so, so, so on this phone call, you get to run the, the, the resume, you get to tell yourself, look, this is what you're going to get to. Uh, but here's my advice. Boom, boom, boom. Now, do you think you would listen? Yes, because I've always been a big believer in learning from other people's mistakes. Right. Same. Right. So if my future self came to me and said, look, <laughs> you can avoid this right? Let's, you know, let's, let's have some time management here. Let's avoid some things, you know, to get you, you know, to make things move a little bit faster. I would definitely listen. That's good. That's refreshing to hear because some of my other <laughs> guests were like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> listen. I'm so hard-headed or stubborn or whatever. Um, I really appreciate you coming on and just sharing your journey, sharing some advice and tips for, you know, people that may or may not want to get into the industry or are in the industry and they want to be more successful in the industry. Um, and it's, it's, I will say as somebody that has worked on one of your sets and, and been casted by you, uh, that it, it does feel different. Um, to be honest, like you cast quality people, uh, because obviously we are on set for hours 
right? And you get a chance to talk to these people. And most of them are what you you uh, described as, you know, the good ones, you know, or that are appreciative and, you know, usually are on top of their things. And, you know, and I even see some of them uh, being like you were back in the day when you were on set, helping out, you know, doing all that stuff. And I was like, and, and I'm like, are, were they like working for her? And then they jumped on the set or are they casted and then they're just helping out. So, you know, it's obvious that they were just helping out because, you know, they care about you. And, and so that's a testament to you, your hard work. And uh, yeah, I appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. I appreciate this. Next time I'm going to be in a bun. <laughs> That's fine. That's hey. Th this is all about being genuine <laughs> and being real. So I'm glad that uh, you feel comfortable enough to be in a bun.